Kevin, what are you welding? Hey. I got a email the other day from a guy who's just getting into welding. And he said, I've got a TIG welder that's also got a stick welder in it. Why would I use one machine over the other? When would I break out the TIG? When would I break out the stick? And I thought, hey, that's a good question. Let's play a little and we'll find out. Is stick the same as arc? Stick, arc, shielded metal arc welding. S-M-A-W. That's the correct designation for it is S-M-A-W. Um, so I thought, well, okay, I've got this big chunk of steel here. This is a piece of five-inch box tubing left over from a sculpture that I made. And it's got a slot cut in it left over from the chop saw. And I thought, all right, well, let's break out the TIG. It's got the stick built into it also. And let's run a little bead with the TIG, and then we'll run a bead with the stick and see how well they work. Remember, TIG, very controllable, very uh, versatile, because you can do so many different kinds of metals with it. Doesn't like the wind, can't really use it outside. You know, it's more for indoors, it's more for protected areas. Where stick, or arc welding, because it's got the flux on the rod, it doesn't use gas. So you can use it outside, you can use it in the wind, doesn't really matter. But let's, let's just play with this little gap now let's see how the two of them work, work it on the same piece of metal. You see, that worked pretty good, actually. Now that was just the TIG set on straight DC, and I've got the foot pedal on it so I could bury the, the, the amperage the way I needed it. And I just started right in the middle of that gap, put my filler rod right down in the middle of the gap and just kind of worked my way back and forth from one side to the other and just kind of stitched it in, kept filling, 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 filling. So now let me change the machine over to ARC and I'll break out one of those rods and we'll come try that. So this is my longevity TIG weld 250 ACDC. And in order to change it from TIG welding to stick welding, here's what you got to do. So this is the ground cable. It has to come out and move to the other side. So you pull your TIG cable out and put your ground cable in. Now that's ready. Your electrode holder goes in the positive side. And then all you have to do is set it from TIG to stick, and I'm going to set it from DC to AC, because I've got some AC rod I want to use that's a little bit heavier to help fill that gap in, make it go a little quicker. So here's some 7018 AC rod, so you can see it's a little bit bigger in diameter, so a little more filler metal, so to help fill that gap in a little bit quicker. my gloves, you know, get rid of the tape gloves, and go to arc gloves, just because they're sparks now, and the sparks will just go right through those gloves. What'd you undo there, Kev? Oh, I forgot. The, uh, with this machine, when the foot pedal is on it for TIG welding, it disables the controls for arc welding. So you have to do just unplug the foot pedal, now everything will work. I forgot. You mean you're not perfect? I am not perfect. <laughs> so I'll set the amps at about 160. Now let's just give that a shot and see how it works. Maybe a little high. May have to turn it down just a little bit, but we'll find out. Just a little warm. Hang on. So let me just knock this slag off real quick, and I'll show you why it was a little warm. 
by drive. So you see the way this was starting to blow out right here? The, the, the gap got bigger than the, the gap that's in the metal itself. That was just a little too hot. You know, too many amps. That's why it started to blow out like that. See the little bubbles right there? That's a little porosity. That's the air coming up from underneath as I'm welding. And it's starting to superheat that air and pull that air up through. So getting a little air mixed in with it. If this was a real job, you'd grind that out and do it over. That, that, wouldn't, that wouldn't be acceptable at all. You, you'd get you, you'd get gigged for that, you know. But let me go ahead and fire it back up again, and we'll try it again and see how it works. What are you turning it down to? Uh, turn it down, turn it from 160, turn it down to 155. So let's, I'll skip that gap, and I'll skip that little hole, and let's start over again, and let's run it there a little bit and see how it does. What'd you turn it down to? Well, I turned it from 155 down to 140. Let's try it there. So this, this is why I like to practice. So that was 160 amps, that was 155, that was 140. I probably could have even gone down a little more than that, go down to about 130, you know, 125, down in that range. I like the TIG. I really like to work with the TIG. I think it's a lot, uh, it's a lot more fun to use. Stick welding, arc welding, is great for heavier metals because you can go so much higher with the amperage. 140 amps with this little rod, boy, you burn it up really quick. You know, 140 amps with that piece of with that stick, there's nothing. That stick can go up to 175, 180 amps. You know, you get bigger rod, your bigger diameter rod, you get up to 200, 210, 215, 220. You know, it all depends on how thick the metal is you're working. Working with you know, little quarter inch thinner than that. Smaller rod, less amps. I like the, I like the uh, the tick. I, I think that works better for me, mostly because I'm inside. Now, if you're working outside, you'd be better off working with the stick, just because of the wind. It all, I think it all comes down to practice. You know, practice, experimentation, working with some scrap. How does it work? Does this machine, you know, does this process work better than the other one? You know, what's the final application going to be? You know, how is the, you know, is the look going to be important? Do you not want a nice, clean, pretty weld? Or are you going to grind the whole thing smooth and put a coat of primer on it, a coat of paint on it, and you'll never see the weld anyways? You know, how thick is your metal? How many amps do you have to run? What kind of metal are you using? Is it steel? Is it aluminum? Is it, you know, copper or brass or bronze or whatever you're doing? You know, you get into the, to the, you get out of steel, you're going to be getting your TIG out anyways. You know, you can do aluminum with stick. It's really messy. There's a lot of cleanup. Aluminum with TIG, almost no cleanup. So, what are you, what are you doing? That's the biggest question. I hope that helps. <laughs>